uh, open up the, the meeting and started. It's seven o'clock by my computer. Do we have anybody from the, the public uh, waiting to be heard tonight for us? No, I take that as a no. So um, let's move down the agenda. Approval of the minutes. Do I have uh, any uh, comments, concerns, questions about last month's meeting minutes? I see none. Do I have a motion to um, accept the minutes as written? I move that we accept the minutes as written. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Right. I see nothing but hands, so uh, those meeting minutes are approved. Cynthia, are you, just to confirm, are you doing, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Katie, I was about to tell you I'm taking this this month, and I'll, I'll plan to, um, unless I'm out from now on, if that works. Okay, yep. Thanks for covering that detail. Um, I have another uh, detail, more than a detail to um, report. Uh, sadly so, um, one of our longer serving and most distinguished members is leaving the board. Uh, Kathy Ballon is um, passing the baton to a new generation. Regrettably, I uh, wanted to make note of her distinguished service over the years, uh, admirably serving several years as chairman and uh, steering the committee ably during that process. And I personally are gonna miss you, Kathy, and I wish it wasn't so, but you know, life, life is not always pleasant. So, but thank you and thank you for your service and with deep regret, I'm sorry to see you move on. Mm -hmm. So that-, uh, that Kathy, is this your last meeting? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Because you've had the interviews, right? For yeah, I was I was out of the country. I wasn't involved, but we're to, it's on the agenda for tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, okay. Um, while I wipe a tear from my eye, can we move on to the uh, director's report? Sure. Um, a lot of this is kind of in my bullet points here. Um, I will look forward to the day pretty soon when I won't have a construction update. That'd be awesome. But for now, actually, it, it may be one of my last construction updates. I'm happy to report that all of the construction is We just lost you, Nancy. It said host muted me. Okay, all the construction is just about finished. So the east, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, east entry has been all um, sealed back up. That was interesting with the showers of sparks from the welding this past week in a small space. So we all just prayed a lot that the library would not catch on fire after all this construction <laughs> was done. Um, the last little bits are being completed. We've had, we have drywall, we have paint. Um, they did need to do some floor repairs upstairs, but it was in a fairly contained area. So there's more of that carbon stitching repair upstairs. So we believe that most, the bulk of our construction will be done possibly as early as the end of this week. So we've got some stuff still to put back together. So I gave, uh, Karen Roney, a list of all of our, our things that need to happen before we open, which isn't all that long. So at this point, we're still targeting around the middle of July to reopen fully. So um, pretty exciting stuff. So we're still attached. We're still, we had to wait to do a few things until the construction folks were out of the way. So our shelving for our new teen area arrives tomorrow. Staff will be putting that in. We'll be moving and shifting the whole teen area. And we've shifted the computer area upstairs and done some 
some other rearranging, but um, very happy to say that our construction is drawing to a close. You'll still see a little bit on the outside, the outside of the keyhole opening and some landscaping and some new um, rails along the east side, the staff, the, they have the iron railing that's kind of, you know, rusted through, et cetera. So you're gonna see some outside things, but inside is getting ready. Um, we do need to have a complete cleaning of our buildings. So we'll have a, a cleaning team made up of city custodians coming in probably next week um, because we're still, even though the staff is cleaning, cleaning, cleaning all the time, we have a thick layer of construction dust over everything in the building, including us probably. So, so we have some things to do, but we look like a matter of, matter of just a couple of weeks now before we'll be open I'll, and I will, let you know the date in the next within the next couple of days. So that's very exciting. Um, I also said budget update. That's we have our department budget meeting tomorrow. So we have our requests in and prioritized. So we'll look forward to seeing how that goes and how we fit into the grand scheme of things. Um, we were asked this year during the budget process to relate our requests back to equity and access. And most of the requests that we make every year for libraries have to do with equity and access. So um, that was not a difficult thing for us to do. And we look forward to hearing everyone's budget reports starting tomorrow. So the, that's the bulk of my time has been spent lately on construction and budget. We have a few other things going on. We are definitely hiring some folks. We have temporary employees that are very important to us that are 20 hour employees that we we had had multiple positions go open during COVID did not, you know, for a while we had a hiring freeze and then we did not fill those while we were still closed to the public. So we are filling those positions as we speak. And I finished with several other folks doing custodian interviews because we're down multiple custodians in the city right now including Rhonda from, uh, from the library. So also important for us to have our second custodian in place once we are open for hundreds of people every day coming in using the building. So um, I feel like knock on wood, things are coming together. So that's, that's most of what I had. That's great news. Do yep. you, an you anticipate a grand opening or are you going to do a quiet opening or what do you think? No, it's, I think it's going to be kind of in between. I'm going to get the date solidified. We're going to let people know. And, you know, we're definitely going to have some flowers and balloons and we may even have, we've been offered one of the high school's jazz bands. So we think that would be fun to have that. Um, so kind of in between a grand opening and a, you know, not, we're not going to do it silently because we're, this is a, a cause for a celebration. <laughs> So we're not going to speechify either, but we're going to make it fun. Great. And were you able to identify any uh, one-time items? I gave some, I, you know, um, at Tim's request, I did give him several one-time items. Um, it was one of those things, though, where I was told that I should have asked those in our regular budget request, which is probably true. I did not because they are larger items that normally have not, you know, some of our items that aren't this large have not been, been um, passed through on budget requests before, but at least I feel like they've come to folks' attention. So, you know, we did mention the, the sorter or the automated materials handler, but that's something that we can also do out of Mosher Fund or one of those, or, you know, one of the other sources. Um, I put a pie in the sky thing there after moving everything out of the way for the construction project, I put in a wish list item for our children's shelving. Our children's shelving is at least 28 years old. It is, from what the other staff said, probably older than that because some of it was in the previous building. It is particle board with ugly veneer that is peeling off. And it uh, some of it was close to collapsing when we moved it and moved it back in. <laughs> so, um, it's pretty ugly and pretty pretty unsteady. So that's a big ticket item that will need to be at least added to the to a capital improvement budget in the future. And then I just throw in meeting room stackable tables with wheels and stackable chairs, which we may do out of the um, PBF 145 fund, which is a capital, a small capital fund. But is it is something that um, 
The tables are extremely unwieldy that we have in the meeting room. Our chairs are extremely uncomfortable as was noticed by um, everyone who came to the city council meetings that were held in the library. <laughs> back when they're they're difficult to stack, they're very hefty and they're they're the world's most uncomfortable chairs. So those were some of the things that that um, came pretty much off the top of my head on wish list items. We always have wish list items that we're thinking of. And if we don't, then we're not doing our job. So just oh, so. hand up. Yeah. Um, so the only feedback Nancy you've received from what I said what I submitted is that those should have come through a different Yes. In a different time frame, pretty much. You haven't. Have you had any confirmation whether or not they're on a on a li a, a list to find? I don't think. I don't think they are. Uh, well, I follow. I made. I made two sets of recommendations. Uh, one of those was the three items mm -hmm. you shared. I followed up on on one of the others. I uh, guess Sunday and have had uh, a, a response in the conversation today with Harold. Um. Um, I, I, my, I waited until tonight. I just want to know where we stood to follow up on the library one-time expenses mm -hmm. or, you know, expenditures for mm -hmm. needs. And um, I mean, I won't, if you tell me you don't want me to, but otherwise I, I would intend to follow up. We have a, we have on our agenda tomorrow night, a budget ordinance uh, to authorize $212 million of spending. Mm -hmm. that was not included in the budget we approved okay. in, uh, in October or November. 61 million of that is, is new is expenditures with mm -hmm. new money. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's carryover. Mm -hmm. And um, I raised the question in an email yesterday. Uh, how is it that the 61 in a $61 million uh, authorization, we couldn't find room for the, the you know, it's pocket change. Yeah. relative to 61 million yeah so i'm i was told that it's likely we would see w one of the other recommendations in the next mm -hmm. ordinance i like I, I my intent would be to follow up to say why is this not worthy of some portion of 61 million or whatever the next authorization is going to be unless yeah. you tell me not to no i just think you know it was probably my my mistake first you know it, it's one of those things where i always have wish list things in my mind and when someone says, hey, is anything on your list? I just answered immediately. Yeah. And I probably should have at least gone to, to Karen and to Harold and said, here's what I'm considering before I just handed it off. And that was, you know, I get excited when people say, hey, we might have some money we could find. So we, could, we could fund something. Well, it's the first time we've ever been asked as council yeah. members. Yeah. You know, you have any one-time expenditures that you'd like to see? Uh, and these are, these are things that are, that are more costly than something that I would tend to put in our one-time budget expenditures because normally we can't, you know, normally our whole list and community services of one times that are much less costly than this is not funded. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not that we don't want these to be funded. If there's extra money around, I think we do, but like I said, unless you tell me not to, my intent is to follow up after this conversation. I think that's probably okay. Um, and I think the horse is out of the barn at this point. All right. But I'm following up tomorrow. Okay, and you know it's one of those it's one of those protocol things that I, I try to be good about, and every once in a while I'm just like, oh, you know, I have to try for try for what we can get for the library. That's part you're of my a, you are a loyal you are a loyal member of the crew. I get that. But I am a I am a loyal member of the crew, and I respect <laughs> hierarchy. But on the other hand, I know you do. But, on the other hand, I wanted I you know I, I have to advocate for the li advocate for the library because that's you my job. Absolutely do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to help. So, any, any oh, is, is is the appreciated. um is the list closed? Then you're not accepting new items that haven't already popped up. Is that true or not? I, I the I, the three items that uh, Nancy just mentioned were in my email to with her, with the rationale she provided and the estimated costs. So they uh, they've already been put in front of someone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and it, uh, is there is that closes it then? You're the you're not looking for anything beyond those items at this point. Uh, if 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 there were other items that in this meeting or in some subsequent conversation, I'd be happy to. I don't know that that window is closed. I know there were uh, Harold and others when budget discussions today. Some of that about how to spend 
revenues that were unanticipated. The, the city is a wash in cash right now. That's just mm -hmm. the truth. Um, you know, we built a, a pretty conservative budget for 2021, um, not knowing what to assume about what the economy would look like. And, and the, the concern then is that we would be in a recession. Well, we're in anything but a recession right now. And um, in, in revenues, I, you know, I, April over April, mm -hmm. April revenues were up 34% over revenues in April a year ago. Yeah, I see it in my tax assessment. I understand. <laughs> well, most of that's just sales tax, sales and use tax. But I um, think, I think we well, there's more have... good stuff coming. Yeah. So, so, so again, is, is, is the second question to that. Um, you had mentioned tonight, uh, Nancy, and you had mentioned uh, last week, this automated catalog processing capability. Oh, How the um, disorder? That's, that is the first one of the requests. That is, that's in the budget. The, the automated materials handler is a sorter. And that is the first thing on the list. And that's about, you know, $250,000 worth. Yeah, that's in the, that's already been submitted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cause I'd rather see that come out of the, the budget if possible, as opposed to the Empson fund. Yeah. We can put the sure. Empson fund money in reserve. I have other ideas for the Empson fund too. <laughs> I, you're a creative person. I, I believe you. We do. But, you know, I think it's one of those things where when the budget process started, the way it always starts for department heads, I, you know, I, I don't think that we all quite knew that the city was as flush with cash as, as Tim later told us after we had developed the budget. So um, or I may have, have been much more, more greedy <laughs> than what I asked for. But, um, you know, it's always, it's always a balance. We want to ask for what we need, but we also know that there are, you know, normally when we prepare the budget, Obviously, we're looking for what we need, but we're also looking as a whole, and we're looking at what the other community services divisions need. And you know, not want to, we want to be we want to get what we need without without overstepping and, and stepping on someone else's toes. So oh, absolutely. But but I can say, given my time on the board, this is the first time I've heard this. It, this spin on the, the dynamics of the budget process. I told Karen I lost my head briefly out. because this never happens. I don't, I mean, I, I've worked for multiple, many munis municipalities and I'm trying to remember if anybody ever said they had more money than they thought. And I don't think so. so <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think it's time to be reticent about that. And I don't think yeah. it's greedy. I yeah. think it's time to be clear on what we need and, and yep. push for it. So I'm, yep. I'm going to push for it again tomorrow. Okay. That's great. Do you have anything more for us, Nancy? You on, yeah, uh, I, I'll touch on a couple of things in our other categories, but I think that was it. Okay. Um, Friends of the Library Report? Yes, I have uh, two meetings to cover. The one the end of May, uh, which is their, both of these are their normal board meetings, and the one the end of June. Um, there were new officers that were elected at the May meeting. Sharon McCaffrey is vice president. Uh, Frank Siskowski is treasurer and Paul Mayer is secretary. Uh, the April meeting is where they always elect their presidents and that's where Prudence Carter was elected. The new board member, Maria mm, Karagianis, mm -hmm. she, she's, did I get that right? <laughs> I think you did. Yeah, she will be taking on uh, the project of working with uh, the Longmont uh, uh, Lapai. That's for the arts and the Friends of the Longmont Museum on the messaging to the public concerning funding for the Performing Arts Center. Uh, the, also the expansion with the museum and whatever results come out of our phase two feasibility study. So she's agreed to kind of be that voice for the friends. Uh, so I was thankful that someone was willing to do that. Um, also, uh, at the June meeting, um, Nancy had mentioned that they uh, will be contracting through the Friends for all the presenters for all the library programs, and a draft contract was sent to the Friends, and it's now in the hands of their attorney being reviewed just to make sure that all their bases are covered. They're expecting that they should be able to move forward with that final versions probably in July or August. So that will be good for them. 
Uh, there was a funding request for the library in May. It was for $4,115 for renewal of the library discovery passes for 2021. And it was uh, approved, of course. Um, they also discussed a little bit our request to the Friends Board about providing for the little free libraries. Uh, they decided they would rather discuss it in length at their board retreat, which is scheduled for August 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the library. There was some concern brought up that this task may be outside of their purpose and scope for the nonprofit. So they needed to kind of look at that and then discuss it at the retreat. So at this point, that's still kind of in limbo then. Membership is reported at 175 members. Uh, they're still trying to figure out ways to reach out to previous members as well as recruiting new ones. That will be a discussion topic at their retreat. At the June meeting, uh, the bulk of the meeting was focused on a discussion of the independent contract with one of uh, the people that works for them, Charity. She chooses, if she chooses not to renew the contract, she's going to provide a transition plan. Uh, the board did select a subcommittee to get an understanding of what the volunteer duties are. There's quite a few of them and exactly what they do. Uh, they will be reporting their findings at the board retreat. And then there will probably be a discussion on uh, developing a position on the board that's a volunteer coordinator position, whether it's tied to another officer or just a separate board position. But they do need to... Uh, work on understanding what all the volunteers do. Uh, the next regular board meeting will be July 21st. And that's all I have. I will send you a copy of this. Cynthia, I'm sorry, I realized I didn't do that this morning. Oh, that, that's fine. Thanks, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any questions for Kathy? So, uh, Kathy, what was their concern about the little free libraries? I know you, you said it was outside of their responsibility, they thought. Um, but it's it's not monetary, right? It's all charitable. Right. Um, I think it goes back to what their bylaws state their purpose is. And one of the uh, statements that one of the board members made was that, um, you know, the purpose of the friends group is to raise money for the library. So they were concerned about handling these little free libraries. So, it, it, and then another board member brought up, um, well, you know, our, we're interested in literacy for the, for the people and that come to the library. So I, I don't know, it's something that they, as the board will need to work out what exactly they're comfortable with doing. They're probably fine with giving the books, but as far as having uh, someone uh, manage little libraries at various places, that might be what the sticky point is. I see. I believe their attorney is looking at the bylaws as yeah. well. So, yeah. so we're just on hold for that until their attorney looks through it. Okay, Councilman. Yeah, uh, Kathy is the, or maybe Nancy, is the is contracting through the friends for outside resources, expertise, talent um, for programming through the library. Is that a workaround um, from yeah. having to go through the city attorney's office? Um, somewhat. It, it's it's not so much the city attorney's office. It's just the. The city's personal services contract is very unwieldy for the types of contractors that we use. And you know, we have some folks, we've lost some, some folks yeah. that have not been willing to do this very long contract with a big disclaimer in the middle about their ability to work in this country, et cetera. And most library contracts, you know, if you're hiring someone to, to make balloon animals and read some stories for a couple hours for $200, this, this contract is just huge. Yeah, so, I, I, so, I thought we had resolved that, but apparently not. No, uh, not really. So, I mean, we, we worked on it at various times, but the, the contract is pretty much as big as it ever was. But then we had the idea that since the Friends really finance all of our library programming, which is highly unusual, but since the Friends finance our library programs, um, I asked Tim, 
in the city attorney's office, you know, would it be something that that we could do to, would it be, you know, kosher to, to have the friends who are paying for these programs be the, you know, the ghosts of the pass through for these contracts with the performers? And he said, yes. So at that point, we went around to, um, you know, probably 20, 30 different library websites, you know, looked at, looked at other people's contracts, looked at what their performer and presenter contracts looked like and contained and sent over our best guess compilation of, of a decent looking contract that looked typical for libraries um, for these types of programs. And it is now with the friend's attorney. So yeah, it is a little bit of a workaround, but it's, it's okay. I mean, if they're paying for the program, we should be able to contract through them and the contracts will be um, a lot simpler. <laughs> So Nancy, is the work around the working around the city attorney's office or the procurement process or both? Yes, both. All right. Because we've looked at doing it, we've looked at several ways of doing it. We looked through the personal services contract. We we looked at purchasing to see if that was any easier going through that type of a contract. And there are some, to my knowledge, some with the purchasing, it looked simpler at first, but there were some some heavier duty insurance regulations that had to do with going through purchasing. And like I said, ours are mostly. They're yeah. almost an honorarium. They're really yeah. small yeah. amounts. Right. And so that's, um, for us, I think it's, this is not something that I haven't seen other libraries do, go through their friends when their friends fund their programs, because many cities and counties have pretty, pretty unwieldy contracts. They're just, the contracts are just structured for larger, larger or ongoing programs than what we normally have. So right. thank that's you. What, that's what we're doing. Anything else for Kathy? Okay, uh, Councilman, can we um, get your thoughts? I've dumped all the thoughts I have tonight already. Really, I, I can I ask you a couple questions? You sir? can indeed. I hope you will. We just we're not. There's nothing on the agenda that has big import. You know, I I, I appreciate Kathy's reference to the new uh, president of, of uh, the Friends committing to this conversation, broader conversation with Lapai and Friends of the Museum. There is a meeting scheduled, I think now for July 11th, I have to go back and look at my calendar with Harold and others. And I think the leadership of Lapai and to try to bring together um, leadership of, of the interests across the community or at least across the, the city functions and, and programs and, and, uh, and offices. Um, to get together on messaging so we can start to think about what a campaign might look like that, that gets, a, gets as much public support as we can generate for the library, the museum, and for the Performing Arts Center and groups. Is that an internal meeting on the 11th or is that a... Uh, it's, not, it's not my meeting, but if you're, Mark, if you want to participate, I'll make that point tomorrow. Uh, well, I guess I'd like to know a little bit more about the meeting before I say one way or the other, if that's possible. Um, I'm happy to uh, get, do as much intelligence gathering as I can. I think it really is about getting people around a table who don't know one another to meet one another and to agree that there is a shared interest. Um, and we have to be real smart about how we can move forward so that um, we don't create winners and losers we don't pit one interest against another um that we have a coherent compelling collective message about what we want to accomplish and what it's going to take to get it accomplished so but i'll i'll, I'll follow up and find out exactly or at least mo as much as i can about the uh the expectations for the meeting on the 11th and and circle back to you i'm going to That'd follow up with you anyway on the our earlier correspondence today and the, uh, uh, I have the 11th as a Sunday. Is that right? Well, maybe it's yes. the 13th. I'd, I'd have to go back and maybe it's the 13th. It's 13th. the 13th at 10 a.m. Yeah. So there you go. It's the 13th. I think I was in Tanzania when I got the initial message. So my calendar was off. I know you get a lot of emails. <laughs> so 13th at 10 a.m. Yeah. Very good. Okay, because uh, conceptually, I would like to sit in, you know, and at least hear on behalf of the board what 
you know what people are thinking but yep. you know if it's if it's not the right venue i don't want to necessarily butt in either so listen i don't think first of all it's not exclusive and i think the more the more leadership we have the better informed uh, in, in terms of all the interests that we share with the library and the museum and the performing arts center, the better off we're going to be. So um, I, you ought not to feel reticent about it at all, Mark, and I'll, I'll follow up tomorrow. Okay. Uh, just let me check something real quick here. Um, just, just trying to determine whether I'd be double booked. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, so, uh, do you have anything on the cultural center, center district that would be newsworthy to pass on? I don't. Um, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you had mentioned last meeting about, um, some participation with, uh, a backstory project on the library. Yeah, as soon as we, um, it, I think it would be ideal when we get the second, uh, the second phase or the second part of the feasibility study. I think that would be the right time to do to hit a couple of high notes. One is, especially if that were to coincide in, within a, a month or so of our, of the, I don't know if it's a grand opening. What are we here as an open house or whatever it's going to be uh, to put those together that we're, we're, you know, we're updated, we're open, and we're looking to the future. And here's what, you know, some of the possibilities are. Well, Nancy and I exchanged emails, and uh, I know she has um, to satisfy interest within the city, but if she will, I will. So participate. So, well, it hasn't been an issue. A, a bunch of city employees have participated in backstory, in those in backstory interviews on. A host of topics from train noise to budget to um, to recovery to all kinds of topics in which the city has an interest. So there shouldn't be there should not be concerns. This is storytelling. It's it's not political. It's not. It's really just storytelling. I mean, I, I, I'm just a private citizen. I can I can get away with that. Nancy is you know. Has, oh, I'm comfortable with it. I'm I'm good. Nancy Besides, was a, I saw my old doctor on one of those backstories. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nancy, uh, in the Future We Deserve series, was a, was a star when we talked about the public or common good. I would what, expect that. What's worth deserving. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, with that, then, I will um, move on to the old business. Uh, do you have any updates for us, Nancy, on the feasibility? Well, it took a while to get started to get the contract through purchasing, but we are underway with the feasibility study. Right now, we are in a data gathering phase. So I am, um, we've set up a SharePoint site and I am corresponding back and forth with Annie and getting her the piles of data that she's looking for, which includes some new data from the past year, some uh, areas where we felt there were holes in the previous consultant's report. So there, there are some additional things she's asked for. For example, we compared our library in that report to some peer libraries from across the country, but you know she was looking for some more depth of data on Long Lunch and on this library. So we've given her you know, a spreadsheet of, um, of you know, 10 years worth of the, the big step statistics from this library, we're also she, she was also looking for some more in-depth demographic data that had been provided for. So um, this is just in this past week that this has been completed, so that we're, you know, the contract was completed, so that we have been able to to start to do our data dump. So that's what we're doing right now. We will be um, scheduling a meeting in July. I'm not sure what the exact date will be. So. We will be scheduling a stakeholder meeting um, in July to get to kind of do a kickoff once we have some of this data and go from there. Um, Annie has a very well planned out um, schedule, but the schedule, everything started about two months later than we had expected to start because it took a while for everything to go through the, the red tape land. So 
Um, I think we're we're on the way to doing some things. So as soon as I have anything more concrete, um, I'll let you know. And also there will be a meeting set up that I know Mark will be involved in. So. Okay, thank you. thank you. Any questions on the feasibility study? Okay, uh, guidelines for use of the Moser and Empson funds. Uh, I, as I was, um, trying to figure out where to go with this and, and look back on the minutes from last meeting. And I noticed that, um, it was requested that there was, uh, some original documentation if it existed, um, and things to help educate the board. Is there such a thing? Um, most sure, I think I've seen one document on, so I can probably come up with, with that. So I think I got that right after the meeting and then promptly forgot about it. So I can send that around. Okay, well, uh, I, I guess as we try and put this together, we'll take whatever education okay. are out there. It looks, it looks like it was typed on one of those, you know, old libraries, uh, old uh, typewriters with the little round keys. <laughs> so hey. it's, it's an oldie. No, I, I have that. I'll send that around. Sure. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I think another thing that we challenged the board with was um, if there were other concerns, issues, thoughts that uh, we wanted to note uh, as part of the construction of the language that would go into revised bylaws, if you will, for the board for this activity. Um, has anybody um, come up with anything new that wasn't discussed at last month's meeting? I do not see any hands, so I would assume not. So uh, then let me ask you, Katie, do you think you have enough information to, to rough draft some bylaws with respect to both of these funds so that uh, we can start to try and frame this and, and you know, get it in a form where um, we, we think we understand it and, and can act according to whatever those agreed upon bylaws are? So are we doing, are these like part of our bylaws? Are they, are they they're separate bylaws? Is that, are well, we calling them bylaws? Let, uh, it's an interesting <laughs> question. Because I feel like uh, bylaws are like. There's, there's board bylaws and these would, I mean, these would be bylaws for the board, whether okay. they're within the original body of our current bylaws or we set them up as a separate set of bylaws. I don't, it doesn't, you know, whatever's easiest as far as I'm concerned. Does anybody have any thoughts? Are we, we probably should have them be separate because maybe agreed. one day the funds won't exist at all. Uh, <laughs> and so then it would have to be taken, removed from the, you know, I, yeah. Uh, so I think they would probably need to be treated as, unless we make it like very, very, uh, which we can do generalized and there's no mention of Mosher or Emson or anything like that. And it's really just like, this is how the live, the board treats funds that are outside the scope of the budget or, you know, year over year numbers for the light. I don't know. I mean, we can do that. And so it's, so it's kind of an umbrella language. I do wonder though, if we ever do move to a district format or, or like the format of this board shifts in that sense, would it be better to have them as separate? That's what I was thinking, Cynthia. I think that makes sense to have it separate. I would agree. I think it does need to be separate. 
Okay. So um, if, if you take the approach of just creating some sort of global document for funds, how, how do you propose addressing um, fund specific requirements? It has I mean, to go, well, it has to go to this. Separate, then it can really be, it can, I don't think it needs to be global because it can really be bylaws for the oversight of the Mosier and Empson funds, right? Because that's just, it's, it's its own entity then. Uh, it was, if we were going to include them in the board's bylaws, I was gonna, that, that's when it would need to be, I would think more generalized, but since they're separate, I think it can really just be uh, specific to Mosier and Empson since we kind of sort of know, I'm not, we, we, we haven't gotten, we really didn't get an answer on the question, the big question, which was, you know, uh, are there any constraints, but, we're operating right now that there really aren't any constraints. Like, ask for forgiveness, I feel like, is how we're asked. We're, we're operating right now. Uh, so I think we can, um, I think we can do bylaws specific to these two funds, assuming that, you know, we don't buy a boat for the library. We can pretty much use them for anything. <laughs> I, I think you want to do that. I think what Cynthia mentioned is something that I had, had a concern about too. You know, if the library were to go to a district, you know, it may be a moot point anyway, because you may have to draft something entirely different if we move to a governing board as opposed to an advisory board. Because, you know, how you handle funds and recommendations to the library about how to spend the funds are different. Your, your powers are different if you're an advisory versus a governing board, for example. So I would, would be specific. So you would or you would not? I would. Yeah, specific to these two funds, specific right? These two funds. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't make probably a blanket statement because that could change. Right. Would it also be better to refer to these more as a board policy as opposed to board to bylaws? bylaws. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where I'm I'm really getting I mean, I feel like now like I need to be an attorney and I am not an attorney. And like I feel like I'm not I don't want to put together this document that in any way is like by, you know, it, it can be, yeah. I, I, like, I like the idea of- A board policy. A policy versus yeah. bylaws. Yeah. So. And policies are in force until the board changes the policy. Did we ever determine that it, was there a question about who has the authority to authorize the funds? Was that, was that ever answered? And that I put together and more uh, guidelines, I suppose. I think we need to find that out before we make a policy about it. I'm not sure who, if that's a, a finance, city finance question or a city attorney's question, but I think that's an important thing to find out. I think that was what the original idea of trying to find the original documents to find out. Well, who. The, doc the document is fairly simple. I will forward it. The document that I've seen back when is is fairly simple and you know has. X amount of funds that you can spend X amount, you know, X percentage of this fund. And at that point, it was on um, materials. I think that's I'm trying to get it mixed up between Mosher and Empson materials for the visually impaired. So, you know, that was when it was a small amount in 30 years ago. Okay, yeah, I think that was the Mosher because we, yeah, the one the where we buy the, the, the encyclopedia is the, that's the money's coming from Empson, right? Yeah, this is Mosher. And I know at the time when, when it was unearthed, which is shortly after I got here, um, I remember, I think it was Jim Gold and it was someone at the city I know that, that you know, they opined that, that that was so long ago and that the folks that had donated this were, were not 
no longer with us, that it could be used for other purposes. But I don't. I know think the that big question that the big question that came out of last month's meeting was, do we need to get approval from City Council, or can we, as the board, say yes? We feel this is a, a something that we are able to spend the money on. Or do we need to bring it to the city council? Because you know, in the past, I think there was confusion because in the past, we were able to approve the request, but we had to basically say to the mayor, "Please write a check for this money." So ultimately, city council was involved in some capacity, and mm -hmm. so that was the my original document that I put together had like a whole section on we're going, the library is going to tell us what they want. We're going to look at the list. We're going to come up with a great, with what we want. And then we're going to propose that this be done to city council. And, and that was met with, <laughs> <laughs> that was met with a little like, well, if we don't need to ask city council, let's not, sorry, one second. <laughs> okay. This is the best part about online meetings. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Fine. Small children in their underwear. Uh <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, I think that was the big question. Do we need to ask for approval from city council or is the board in a position to approve it and, and use the funds? Would you like me to ask the city attorney? I can ask Kim Hole. Mark, you're muted. How's that? Better. Yeah, we can hear you now. I don't know if that's for the better or not, but uh, the, the, the point that I was tr trying to follow on uh, from Katie's discussion was as long as the city has the money and has to write the check, they're the ultimate arbiter of, of what gets done. And so, um, unless they relinquish that power and say that it's just solely on our authority that, that we can disperse money from, from either fund, I'm not sure how that gets solved. Well, I'm willing to ask Tim Hole and our attorney and or Jim Golden if they have some theories about this, if that will be helpful because you know, the, the attorney or the head of finance seems like the, the ones that would probably know the answer to this. So. Yeah, because I, I think we can say as part of like the preamble to our policy that it's that's based on the passage of time and, and our understanding that the original restrictions associated with either fund are no longer relevant and that based on that, that, that the board feels that it can entertain expenditures in just about any area related to the library's benefit or something to that effect. Councilman? Yeah, I, um, as I recall, it was Jim Golden's opinion that, that, the, that the, it was your prerogative uh, to determine how to spend those dollars. But I, I think Nancy's thought about uh, directing a question. I think you ought to send it to both Tim and to Jim. And if you're willing to copy me on it, yep. um, I'd be happy to press the case to get an answer. I things go to the, I mean, I, questions and ideas go to the city, city attorney's office to die. Right. Um, so they rather have, they than have a ticket system now, so it is. Oh, it oh really? That's good. Yes, they do. Uh, but I, I would sure be happy to press the issue or to say we, we need a timely response here. But I do think to include what you what you understood Jim to say. Sure. Uh, to both and say, well, like we would enjoy a, res a definitive response from either of you. Mm -hmm. um, but this is our understanding as Mark had suggested, but we don't want to proceed without confirming 
that we're on solid ground from the perspective of the attorney's office yeah, think, as well as the financial office. I think so you don't get to, any surprises. I'll do it. I think that's yeah. the way to go. And Jim is great about getting back, but I know we're right in the middle of the budget right now. So it might, yeah. you know, might take a little bit, but I'll go ahead and draft that. All right. Okay, so I guess um, we have to defer this one then uh, another month till we get some feedback. And uh... I mean, if, if we get feedback sooner and Nancy can email it out, then I can proceed. So it can be, um, you know, it can. I I will keep an eye on my email, and if we see something come through, I can work on it. Otherwise, yeah, I think that I think that's the the main question. So without that, it's hard to proceed. Okay. Anybody have a problem with that? Okay, let's go forward on that basis and um, feel, free to, feel free to wordsmith however you wish to wordsmith, Katie, and we'll take a look at it. And, yay or nay it based on the group's decision. Um, okay, we talked about the little free libraries and the comments from the um, Friends of the Library. Um, Nancy, last time you mentioned there was like an all library directors meeting that you attend that might allow you to gain additional insight on Boulder's library district. Uh, did such a thing happen and was it, there any insight there? This is this is the one month of the year that we do not meet. So I do not have further insight into that as of yet. So. Okay, so we'll, we'll await any new findings that come out of your discussion. I haven't seen I haven't seen much in the media, but I can always contact Boulder's director directly too and see if there's anything new. Okay, very good. Either way. Um, I'm going to move on to new off or new business unless there's any other questions with uh, some of the items we've just covered. So uh, with Kathy's leaving, there's, uh, of course, a gaping hole in our coverage of uh, officer responsibility uh, with her being the Friends of the Library Liaison. Um, do we have any thoughts? I uh, was wondering, this is not, it's not something that I could do every month. Like I couldn't go to two meetings in the same week every month. Uh, but I'm wondering, my thought was, and maybe excluding you, Mark, because your duties are well above and beyond any other officers, is if we each took a turn like that's I feel like more palatable than like you know I could I could do two meetings in one week every three months or every you know as but as, is that something we could entertain how do you think the friends would react to that you think they'd care or not yeah <laughs> Having been well, a liaison, I don't think they would care. <laughs> well, and also, if you don't, you know, if you don't even want to do that, if you're just going to wait just and see, you know, on our new board appointee, if you want to wait till that time, I could, rep I, I go to all of them so I can report back from the friends meeting in the interim as well. And, and the, ti the timing on the new appointee is tomorrow night? Yes. Oh, okay. Katie, I like that idea, though. Um, I mean, I, I guess depending on what the new board members' desires are, because I'm also interested in in learning about uh, more about the Friends of the Library, but I don't have time um, to take yeah. it solely on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, w when I used to do it, I found it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I found it very helpful to go. Like, I I I learned a lot there. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I do think it's it's beneficial. <laughs> you gotta stop. You gotta stop. Uh, I do think it's beneficial for the board members to be involved. I actually think it might uh, be beneficial to the friends too to kind of 
know more of us <laughs> and get different perspectives. So just, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Cause I know that Catherine said she's also starting law school in the fall. So she's definitely not gonna be able to do it every month. Uh, so, I mean, there's three of us who are like, I can't do it every month. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm okay with pushing this thing out till next meeting to yeah. to try and hash it out and figure out what we want to do. Uh, if, if you're willing to, when is the the uh, July third Monday? At the July twenty first meet. meeting. Yeah. See, I guess if you're willing to. Just let us know if anything comes out of that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> in light of the uh, city council moving back to in-person meetings, I thought it would be an interesting discussion to have amongst our board as to when we thought we would want to return to in-person meetings. <clears throat> Do we have any um, thoughts or concerns one way or the other on that? We have a cleaned up boardroom, a cleaned up conference room and places for people to meet if you're, if you're willing. So it's up to you. I mean, I well, personally would, I would like to go back to in-person. Cards out there in our group. What's that? Are there any major COVID concerns about getting together? Is everybody been vaccinated? Are you yes, to yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, um, is is there a reticence to get getting back together because of the convenience of online meetings. I do like the convenience of the online meetings, but I think the benefits gained from meeting in person outweigh those. So I, I am ready to go back uh, next month or really any time. I personally would prefer to go back to in-person. I, I do so many Zooms all day, every day get me out of here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in line with both of you because I uh, think you miss a lot on these online meetings. I, I think the interaction is has uh, less uh, quality to it and um, the give and take is, is a little more constrained. And we would also like to show you the new stuff in the library. So some things look Wonderful. quite different. You haven't been back for a while. There are some areas that look quite a bit better, so. Could we Okay, add well, I'll make a resolution that um, next meeting forward that we um, plan on going back to the old format of meeting at the library mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. as we historically have. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Okay. Cynthia, did you have a question? I have a request. Can we put a tour on the agenda of an upcoming mm -hmm. meeting for the new construction? But also for, yeah. I I haven't seen like kind of the inner workings of the library as a whole. Um, yep. Great. Sure. Did you just I, mute yourself, Cynthia? I did because I, I was answered. Oh, okay. On the agenda. Thanks. And I, I show you me, muted yourself, Tim. Do you have any concerns with going back to meeting in person? None whatsoever. I can hardly wait really? to get back to seeing real, real people and real faces and real conversations. So, no, I have no constraints at all. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I okay, would also great. like, Mark. I would also like to get back to um, not necessarily every meeting, but bringing some staff members that have something big going on in their department to do a report from their department at your meeting. I'd love it. And I, I'd would love like, it. I would like the staff to know you better and vice versa. So, Mark, I should add, by the way, I am going to, the only other week in the next, I don't know, foreseeable number of years that I'm going to be out of town 
is the last week in July. Um, and assuming that board is going to meet the last week in July, I will be out of town. Other than that, I'm, I'm here for the duration, but it's, there's a family reunion that I'm, I'm not going to miss uh, that's uh, in Sun River, Oregon. So um, if the board's going to meet that month, that week, then, then I will be absent, but not because I don't want to meet with you in person because I'm going to meet with my siblings and nieces and nephews. Well, that sounds like fun. And that's an interesting segue because I personally do not think I'll be in town on July 26th either. So um, I guess uh, if the board is interested, we could meet a week earlier, the, the previous Monday. Um, or Mark, we could, that, may uh, be the, that may be the day we open to the public. And so I that think, doesn't sound like a good idea. I think one of us meeting me is probably going to be fried on the 19th. Well, I don't are you, know. Out, are uh, you out that whole week, Mark? Potentially, I could be out till Thursday. Hmm. What about August 2nd, pushing out a week? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm out of town that week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What about the, uh, let's see, the 23rd? Bear with me a second. Summers are su such great uh, times to try and schedule meetings. Yeah, I'm, I got problems in August too. Um, does anybody want to suggest a day? Or you, just want to, you want to carry forward with the 26th and see if there's a quorum. My preference would be if, if Mark and Tim, if you are both out to find a, another date. Mm -hmm. um, Especially I, if there's going to be a new board member. Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> um, I am most likely out on vacation the 9th, but that's tentative. That, that that's pushing us further in to August, but that week could work. How about the how about the uh, non Monday, the week of the nineteenth, other than the nineteenth? What does what do people's schedules look like? Yeah. I can do any any day the week of the nineteenth. Uh, the, the Tuesday, the, the July 20th is an open forum for the council. And I, regardless, I'd be up, up, tied up on Tuesday night. But other than that, uh, I'll be available. Well, the 21st is bad for Nancy because that's the Friends of the Library meeting. Yeah. Yeah. How about the 22nd? The Friends meet the third Monday of the, I mean, Wednesday, sorry. Third, third Wednesday. Yeah. Why don't we all go to that meeting? Um. <laughs> Mark, I'll need to I'll need to check for myself. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, and I don't have my calendar in front of me. Uh, that would be a, that would, it would be a scheduled NGLA meeting, the yeah. third Thursday of a month, and uh, I'm a liaison to that group. Well, so the third Thursday, Tim, is actually the fifteenth. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. That would work perfectly then. <laughs> so the 20, 22nd may make sense. Yeah. Yeah. That works for me. Me too. Okay. So uh, I'll nominate uh, moving the meeting to uh, July 22nd at 7 p.m. at the library. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Okay, we'll just have to make sure that Cynthia and, or not Cynthia, but Catherine and the new board member catches wind of that. Very good. Uh, at that point, does anybody uh, from the board have a, a comment to make? Yes, I do. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. 
Yes, um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I've, I've really enjoyed working on this board. Um, I just, it's gotten to the point now where I do need to step back just to kind of take stock of where I'm at health-wise and so forth like that. So that's my reason for stepping back, but uh, it's been a joy and I will keep my eye on things that are happening with the library and I wish you the best, Nancy, on getting it open and looking forward to being able to go inside. And Thank you. So I just thank you all. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. And I'm going to miss you. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been great. Great tour uh, of uh, duty. And uh, we're going to miss you. And, uh, you know, who knows what the future will hold. Maybe you'll throw your name back back in the hat again and it's possible come back to us so thank you thanks thanks for all your effort yeah yeah, to, yeah thanks kathy we're gonna miss you yeah you know it's true for everybody on this screen right here but uh kathy since you're gonna you're gonna transition uh i can't tell you from a from a council perspective how much I and we appreciate the willingness of people like you and the others of this board and the others who serve to step up um, and serve the way you have. It, it, is, it is one of the, uh, I don't know if it's unique, but one of the great assets in this city is the, the, the willingness of people like you to volunteer in ways that you volunteered. It makes a really significant difference and, and it's deeply, deeply appreciated. So thank you. Here, here. Okay, with that, I will um, move to adjourn um, at uh, 8.06. And we'll see all one another on July 22nd at the library. Yay. And, ho and hopefully we'll be all open to everybody by then. So cross your fingers. <laughs> I, keep, I keep waiting for one more disaster to happen. So <laughs> hopefully not. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh,